So, in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running you through the shop and we're going to show you uh, all the machines in there and all the top safety uh, concerns of using each machine. And while we're doing that, we're also going to be making a wooden baseball bat. So, the first thing we're going to be doing is switching on our safety glasses because, one, they're required in the uh, tech shop. And two, you don't want to wear regular glasses while in the shop because if you scratch them or ruin them, that's it. You can't you can't see without using your contact. And so now let's go and pick out our wood. Okay, so this is the materials storage room. After you. <laughs> I'm always a gentleman. Anyways, this is where we keep all of the woods and metal supplies. So, for our bat, we're going to want a big, nice piece of wood. Um, you don't really want to use a soft wood like pine, because it's a bat. I mean, the first thing you hit, it's going to break into pieces. And as much as, as cool as that would be, that's not a very decent bat. So, we're going to pick oak, which is a hard wood, and so this looks like a good piece. What, what, do you, what do you think, Mason? It's a good piece. It's a good piece. <laughs> it is a good piece. So, um, that's about eight feet. And what we're going to do is, it's not going to be a very large bat, but it's going to be maybe about two feet to maybe a foot and a half or um, somewhere around there. So what we're going to do is mark it so we can cut it at the right lengths that we want. In fact, we'll go three feet because there's a lot of wood here. So there's one foot. There's two. And do we have enough for three? Ooh, we do. Look at that. That makes it just barely. Alright, now that we marked it. Um, we are now going to go to the circular saw to cut. Okay, this is the radial arm saw <laughs> that um, we usually use it to cut long pieces of wood that come right out of storage. Um, a couple of things. It has a pulley right here and it comes out slow. You got to be careful not to just let it go back on its own when it's spinning because Otherwise, it'll catch the wood and it'll fling it back back out at you. That's not what you want to do in the shop. Um, you have your on-off switch right here, and you have the vent right there to catch all the sawdust. So here is the piece of wood that we brought out of storage, and this right here is just a stand to. It's like an extra set of hands uh, for if you're the only one here in the shop. Um, right here. You can see where we made the pencil mark. This is exactly three feet. Uh, here's the blade. And what we want to do is make sure that the board... <coughs> you can stand up a little bit. What we want to do is make sure that the board is tight against this um, stopper right here. Um, we want to make sure that the saw will be right on the mark that you cut, or that you marked at. So, you gotta make sure to not get your thumb in the way of the saw. You don't wanna go thumbless. So, and just make sure to keep constant pressure on the wood. And you don't wanna yank this right off when you're done cutting. Just pull it away slightly, and just set it off to the side, stop the saw, put it on the ground, and move your piece of wood next, which is what I'm just about to do. So.
want to make sure that the saw completely stops before you go and move your piece of wood. You don't want any uh, accidents to happen. So there's the first piece. And here goes the next piece. And there, we now have our three pieces of wood, so now what we're going to head to is the jointer. Okay, this is the jointer, and what it does is when you take a piece of wood right out of the shop, uh, the wood may be warped where it has a slight bend in it, and if you're making anything, that's really bad. So what the jointer does is when you slide it through, you can join an edge of the board to make it a flat surface, which is what you want. And you can also join a face of the board. Um, big, big safety thing. Um, right here uh, is where the blade is. Um, can you see that? Yeah. And what it does is it spins at about 3,000 uh, revolutions per minute, which is very fast. Um, and if your fingers get, I mean, anywhere near close to there, it's done. It'll take the skin right off your fingers, take the bone right off your hand. It's faster than you can even imagine. So a uh, big safety thing is never, never get your hands close to there, even while it's off. It may start up on its own. Um, that's why we have holders to hold the board so you're not actually doing it with your hands uh, once you're the face of the board. A big safety feature or safety point is you never ever joint um, this edge of the board. When you're going, you're going, you're running it through the joiner, it has a tendency because it's such a short amount of wood there, it'll kick it up and it can fling it, I mean, anywhere. Uh, one time, that tractor right there, um, a kid was doing that with a piece of wood and it just flew back and put a huge hole right in the side of the tractor. And that's not what you want to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through uh, all the edges of the boards first. We're going to do one edge. You do one edge of a board and one face. So that's what we're going to do right now. Um, you have your on and off switch right here. Um, right here is where the blade is, of course. <coughs> and right here is the vent. You want to make sure that that's open. And right here you have a holder. Now, when you're jointing an edge of the board, you don't really have to use a holder, but you most certainly do when doing a face. And actually, all of these boards, if you wanna look at this one, you see that right there? All of these boards are longer than the actual pathway of the joiner. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna joint one edge of each board we're going to join one edge of each board first so we can run it through the table saw. So we can run it through the table saw and cut the boards down so that each face will fit through the table saw. So we're only going to do one edge of each board. And it may take multiple times. So. if the board is warped. Uh, the way that you can tell is if you hear a good solid cut all the way through. Uh, the first time you heard it, you heard it, you heard it cut just about here and then you didn't hear it cut again until it got to the end. 
and when it cuts all the way through, you know that you have a nice uh, even board. So if you want to see the difference, this is how it came out of the shop. And what we did to it is this is what it looks like. It's a nice, clean edge. And this is what you want to use when you're running along a bandsaw or, or when you're running along a table saw. So what we're going to do is we're going to joint the rest of these three boards and we're going to take it to the table saw. Before we get to the table saw and the ripping of the boards, um, the last board was a little bit longer than three feet. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross cut a board. What a cross cut means is cut this way. This is to cross cut a board. Uh, to rip a board is to cut this way with the grains. So what we're going to use to cross cut is this machine called a power miter box. And if you can see on the board, right here is what we're going to be cutting off, everything after this. So with this power miter box, uh, it has a laser. The button for the laser is right here. Maybe you can come see this laser. And I mean, it lines up for you very nicely. And you want to have your hand pressed firmly against here um, while you cut. And right here, you have to hold this thumb button down and do this and push this trigger down as well. And this can move this way, and it can also move up and down. So the way that you cut is you bring it out first, then you bring it down and it'll just cut right along for you. Uh, and the vent is right here. So that's what we're gonna do with this right now. This is the table saw, and it has many uses. Um, what you just saw with the power miter gauge, you can also cross cut with a table saw. Uh, you can use this to cross cut. It fits right here in this little groove right here, and you would simply run it through like this. Um, that's how you would cross cut. And to rip a board, which is what we're gonna do, uh, you use this, you know, this bar, and. Jointed an edge right here is what is going to ride along the bar right here. Um, if we use the unjointed edge, it's not completely square with the board and you'll get an off center cut. So, uh, right here, you have the blade, uh, you have the safeguard, or safety guard for the sawdust, uh, right here. want to come on this side, Mason. Mason. <laughs> right here, uh, you have a ruler. Uh, and right here on the bar, this is your locking mechanism for the bar. This is locked, this is unlocked. Uh, if you look right here, you can see where it lines up on your ruler, where you want to make a nice cut. And right here is how you control the blade. Um, this locks, this lever locks and unlocks it, so we're going to unlock it, and what this one does is raises and lowers your blade. Now, for our wood, we're going to put it here, and you just want the top of the teeth to come out. You don't want the teeth sticking way up here, that's not safe for your fingers. Um, if it were a safety hazard, uh, where you would accidentally cut yourself. You want the blade to be as small as possible to get the least amount of damage done to your fingers. Um, so that looks about good, so we're gonna lock that in place. And it, this table saw is also very nice. Um, what it does is it can also make 45 uh, degree angle cuts, which is this lever right here. It's the same as that one, and it has a locking and unlocking mechanism. And if you wanna look at the blade, um, 
right there. You see how it turns as far as you need it to go. So what we want to do is we want to have a straight up and down cut. And we're going to lock that in place. Right there. And the joiner, the path to jo fully join a face of a board is only six inches uh, wide. So that's where we're going to cut all of these boards down to. So we're going to take our bar. Oh, before I start, another big safety hazard is when you're cross-cutting like this, never, ever use the bar to do a cross-cut. Um, you can do it to measure it just fine, but you need to take the bar away and use the miter gauge before you do a cross-cut. Because when you do it like this, and you're just holding on, the board has a huge chance of being able to be kicked back and severely hurt you or hurt other people. So, and that's not what you want to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this to six inches. So, if you want to see. That's at six inches right there. So we're just going to lock that down in place. And right here, you have your control panel. Um, right here is the on and off switch. Right now it's on, and this is your push to stop, pull to start lever. So you would pull it, pull it to start and push it in to stop. So to cut this, we we're gonna take the jointed edge and place the jointed edge along the bar. And it's narrow enough, or it's wide enough for me to fit my hand in to push it through. If it's not though, um, we have paddles here to help you slide along if you cannot fit your hand through. Uh, you always want to be safe when working with tools like this uh, as much as possible. So that's what we're going to do right now.